If you're a videographer going to film a sports game, there are some things that you definitely want to make sure you do. And there are also a few things that you should probably not do. So today we're going to talk about five mistakes to avoid when you're filming sports videos. Hey, what's going on? My name is Peter Cirellis. I'm a videographer and editor from Toronto, Canada. I specialize in sports videography. And the first mistake that you want to avoid when filming sports videos is getting to the game right at tip off. You definitely want to make sure you're getting to a game at least two, maybe even three hours before it starts. This gives you ample time to get establishing shots of the stadium, film players arriving, film players warming up, and really set the scene for the story that you're gonna tell at this game. The game itself is only a fraction of a sporting event, and as a sports videographer, your job is to capture the event in its entirety. So you wanna make sure that you're giving yourself enough time to do that properly. The next mistake to avoid is don't use auto ISO or auto white balance. Your exposure and white balance settings can change drastically as you're filming and when you point your camera in different directions, especially if you're filming outside. So you wanna make sure that you've got your white balance and your exposure dialed in using custom settings that you can adjust as needed. Your camera doesn't always know the exact look that you're going for, but you do. So make sure that you have control over all the settings that you need to, to make sure that you're always getting the look that you want in your image. The next mistake to avoid is thinking that your autofocus is going to do all of the work for you. If you intend on regularly filming using autofocus like I do, then you need to make sure that you understand how your autofocus works. You wanna make sure that you're picking the right autofocus setting by testing it ahead of time, either on yourself or on a willing subject. And you wanna dial in your settings, such as eye tracking and focus sensitivity to your own preferences. I like to make sure I have easy shortcuts set up for hold focus so that I can make sure that I don't get any focus hunting if somebody walks in front of my camera. And if your camera has touch tracking autofocus like mine does, then you wanna make sure you play with that setting ahead of time so you know how to use it most effectively when you're in the field, running and gunning, and you're on the go. There's tons of different settings that you can use with your autofocus to make it perform the best for you. So make sure that you're super used to them ahead of time. That way your autofocus does what you expect it to do when you're in the field actually filming a game. The fourth mistake to avoid when you're filming sports is focusing too much on action and not enough on emotion. Now, don't get me wrong. You wanna still capture the action that's happening in the game. But don't be afraid of making some educated predictions and focusing on certain players in the game who you think might have a higher probability of reacting emotionally and giving you that hype emotional shot that you can use in your edit to elicit emotion from your audience. When I'm filming football, I most commonly capture emotional shots either pre-game, after first downs or touchdowns in-game when I can easily predict who's gonna give me that emotional reaction or post game from whichever team's story I have a vested interest in telling. The fifth mistake to avoid when you're filming sports is being too afraid to get creative. And I know this probably sounds silly since making videos is a creative venture, but you'd be shocked how many times I go to a game and see someone just stay in the same spot with the same setup, shooting the same thing all game long. You wanna make sure that you're being creative with the cameras that you're using, the lenses, the stabilizers, your position in the field, and pretty much any other variable that you can account for to make sure that you're getting a good variety of footage. If you keep pushing yourself over the course of a game to film the same action in different ways, then when you actually get home and you're editing, you're gonna find that you have much more dynamic footage to work with than if you had just sat in the same place all game, filming with the gear that you know best, and doing everything that's comfortable to you without pushing your limits. When I'm filming with the CFL, I always try my best to be creative with my camera angles. I film on 400 millimeter lenses. I film on 20 millimeter lenses. I'll film handheld on a monopod, on a hi-hat, on a gimbal. I'll try filming from the stands. I'll film from the sidelines. Anything that I can do to make my footage look a little different and capture a vantage point that I haven't seen before and that the audience hasn't seen before is something that I'm willing to try. It makes me a better filmmaker and I think it makes my footage look better as well. Those are five mistakes that I try to avoid when filming sports videos. If you have any other common mistakes that you think people should avoid when filming sports videos or any best practices that you like to use, drop them in the comment section. I would love to hear what you have to think. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to subscribe. And if you like the way that my footage looks, then you can get the ledge that I use to color all of my sports videos on my website at the link in the description below. Anyways, that's gonna be all for this one. So until next time, peace.